welcome to Special Assignment. I'm Anneliese Burgess. Ten years ago, soccer administrators hung their heads in shame when 42 people were killed in an overcrowded soccer stadium in Orkney, a small mining town in the northwest province. Then they vowed it would never happen again, but it seems as if no lessons were learned. Recently, 43 soccer fans were killed, again in an overcrowded stadium, this time Ellis Park in Johannesburg. And again the match was between South Africa's two most popular clubs, Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs. Public hearings into the disaster will only begin in July. And despite the lack of answers as to why the disaster occurred, soccer fans remain true to the sport. They have their own views as to what happened that fateful night at Ellis Park. Producers Paul Moachi and Jessica Pitchford spent some time with some of soccer's most devoted fans. <laughs> We are few. We are few. We found we can't just walk into some. I need to take everything. Yampel, I not an issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sapula. Oh, wow. Tabon come in for it. Too much. Masami for it. Masami. 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 I'm trying to see how. I'm being. I'm trying to. I'm being. I'm being. I'm being. I'm being. I'm being. See how we are few. I'm trying to. Few. 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 I'm being. There can be no greater Orlando Pirate supporter than Mzion Mofokeng. We should leave now. It's time. He's been an Amabaka Baka fan for nearly 40 years. But I don't think we need this guitar today, man. It's, you know, it's war today. Yeah. We, we don't have to take a guitar. I need my top guitar, I need this spear, you know. I, I need Ngomeni, I need Sapula. You know, you know the middle fred marshal is yeah. here today. I must take Ngomeni because it's war today. I'm going to Before they leave, a prayer for the safety of the fans. Uh, let's put our hands together. Okay, I, I pray because I, I, the, the Almighty has got the power to do everything for me. All the people who are on their way to the stadium, the Almighty must put his mercy on their shoulders so that everybody must arrive safe at the stadium. And being right here at the stadium, we must now watch our game peacefully. We must enjoy the game. The better team of the day must win the game and you must accept. If my team loses, I mustn't cry. I must know God will give me one day. Tonight, Orlando Pirates will be taking on underdogs Morocco Swallows in the quarterfinals of the Bob Save Super Bowl competition. At the FNB Stadium in Soweto, Officials are cautiously preparing for tonight's game. It's going to be Orlando Pirates' first match since the disaster at Ellis Park. It isn't likely to be a sellout, but no chances are being taken this time. 250 security guards aligned to the clubs are going through their paces. Andrew Dipella of the Premier Soccer League, which governs local soccer, looks anxious. We are going to have radios, we are going to have loud, loud hailers which are going to be utilizing also to call. Firstly, radios communicate amongst each other because sometimes you might have to tell them that this side, the tickets are finished, go the other side. You can't only do it by word of mouth. But when you have a loud hailer, then you can address a larger number of people. Ellis Park Stadium, a few kilometers away. Soccer fan Jabulani Jali pays homage to those who lost their lives. He's flown in from Durban to watch tonight's game but he can't erase the last match from his mind. When the first goal was scored, I did not even see, you know, I didn't even see who scored the goal, how it was scored. I was very much worried about the developments here. People were jumping on, on, on people, you know, who were, who were already lying down, you know, and uh, I just could not take that. Before the game started, there was already trouble here, you know, there were a number of people, you know, who were trapped already. And when the game started, you know, that is when actually a lot more people, you know, were, were actually trapped here. Eleven minutes after start of play, stretcher bearers can already be seen near gate four. Huge drama outside the stadium that we can tell you about. 30,000 people trying to get in. The stadium is packed to capacity. And let's just hope we don't get incidents tonight. Despite the fact that the first sign of trouble was noted long before, Amazingly, it took a full half hour before the game was halted. 
In an interview just before kickoff, an official from the South African Football Association commented on the traffic chaos outside Ellis Park. He even warned of a stampede. He was asked how such a situation could be avoided in future. It's a question of uh, having uh, loud hailers outside the stadium to tell the people to take it easy because uh, to avoid a stampede because thousands of people are still outside and the game is kicking off at 8 o'clock. But it's very difficult for people to, to leave early at work to come this side because most of the people are knocking off at half past five. So now coming from Kronstadt, coming from Velkom, coming from uh, Pochepstrom is a little bit difficult for supporters. Pirates and Chiefs draw huge support. Even hawkers knew they had to bring an extra stock that night. As, uh, Pirates and Chiefs, there is a uh, crowd. So that we didn't know that. We, go, we buy a lot of stock, we sell. Those who sell liquor, it was sold out. Even as drinks, some drinks, sweets, drinks, snacks, uh, cold drinks, pop and steak and everything, we were all sold out. There was no hawkers who returned back with their food or any drinks or anything. Yet the security on the night wasn't prepared at all. Fans who contacted special assignment said that after 8 o'clock, they saw no guards at several entrances to the stadium. Some gates were open and unattended, so people simply streamed in. Once inside, they were trapped in a stadium ready to burst. The aisles were jam-packed, but the surge continued. Two early goals made those trying to get in even more frantic. And now the shot flies in. Chiefs are ahead against the run of play. It's a great goal with his right boot. Johnson forced to pick it out of the net. Fans even began trickling onto the pitch because there was nowhere else to sit. Some people tried to, to, to push those who were coming in, to push them back. But those who were trying to go back so that they could clear, you know, the center here, were actually pushed back by the security guards, you know, because people had actually tried to occupy the VIP stands, you know, trying to clear the way, you know, but those security guards were at, on, on, at the VIP stands, they were pushing them, pushing them backwards. After witnessing several people being crushed, Jabalani Jali tried to reach the security control room, which overlooks the ground. I asked the security guards, you know, who were on the corridor, and then I said, do you have a radio, you know? They said, no, we don't have a radio. Then I said, how do you communicate? You know, who is your superior here? Who is in command, you know? No, nobody knew, nobody knew. But whilst I was still running up and down, outside I could see that there were bodies, you know, who were actually pulled from inside, being I would say like thrown outside, you know, by the people, you know, because they were just dumping them outside and nobody was there. No resuscitation was taking place. There was, there were no paramedics. There was nothing, you know. I tried everything, you know, until I got there to that control room, you know, and where I told them to stop the game and they wouldn't. Some fans were impaled on railings that collapsed. And still, the match continued. Starting wide on the right tonight, this video footage shows spectators applauding the game, with people dying in front of them. Huge dramatic scenes on the side of the field in an evening which was always set up for something dramatic to happen. With tickets being sold at the stadium, fans rushing in here late as they always do. Until finally, after 33 minutes, the match was stopped. The referees come across. There's some incidents. They're going to have to stop the game here by the looks of things. Robin Peterson there. Don't push. Don't push. Don't panic. Just clear this way here. Sanitaire, please. By then, 43 people who'd come to enjoy a game of football had died a terrible death. Emergency vehicles couldn't get in because of the parking chaos outside. Then the tunnels into the stadium were too low for some ambulances. Some of the critically injured were loaded onto golf carts. 
Officials involved won't talk about the incident. They believe the matter to be sub judice because a commission of inquiry has been appointed. It's been incredibly sickening to watch the soccer officials hide behind this uh, judicial inquiry. There's, uh, there's a culture in this country of, of uh, whenever there's a whiff of judicial interest in anything for people to hide behind the sub judice and other um, legal terms, which is absolute nonsense. I mean, I think the PSL could have come out by now and, and, and made a, a couple of steps to, to reassure the fans that they have the interest of the spectators at heart. So, you know, there's been absolutely no action taken against anybody. While we were interviewing Jabulani Jali at Ellis Park, we came across a guard who'd been on duty the night of the stampede. He said his colleague had been completely overwhelmed by the crowd who'd forced the gates open. It was easy because people were standing here. They were blocking the way here. At that time, it was on a rider. He blocked the people on top, the other guys. Right, he did what? He blocked the people. The right. people forced all the people. They hit the security out of the way. This could have been easily prevented. Had they realized that there was something that was happening here, and if they had the know-how of how to control the crowds, it could have been easily, easily prevented, especially inside the stadium. We are paying our money, and we would love them to actually take care of our lives. Long as they can get your 15 rand at the gate and get you into the crowd and put that money into their coffers, they're happy. You're a commodity, you're not a person. That's the sad thing about SA Soccer. The only teams that still attract big crowds are Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates. The clubs are led by two powerful men, Ivan Koza and Kaiser Mutaung. If Kaiser Mutaung and Ivan Koza really wanted to take South African football to a new level, between the two of them, everybody else would come along. I mean, Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates, at the end of the day, is the breadbasket of SA football and everybody else kind of uh, skirts on their, on their tails. So if they, between the two of them, you know, took a decisive leadership and said, okay, look, we're going to fix up the domestic game now. We're going to ensure that this kind of thing never happens again, that, that the standards of stadia, the standards of organization of games are taken to a new level. It will be done overnight. I have no doubt about the, the strength and the power of those two, uh, both personality-wise, but also in terms of the products which they control, which essentially is Chiefs and Pirates. Attendance at other games has dropped drastically over the years. Those who go to football regularly will tell you that uh, the crowds of the 70s went down in the 80s, went down in the 90s, and they are drastically down in the new century. And, uh, and the reason for that has got to be allied with the fact that uh, going to a football match is no longer as joyful an experience as it used to be. It's six o'clock in the evening. Zion Moffa Keng and his friends are anxious they'll be late for tonight's game at the FNB Stadium. Our filming has delayed them. It's a 60 kilometer drive from Sebo King in the Val Triangle where he lives to Soweto. He had to pick up friends en route. And there's something else he has to attend to. A week ago, Zion got some tickets from his club and asked petrol stations to sell them. He did this, he says, to get the community used to the idea of buying tickets before the game. The problem at Ellis Park was that most people arrived without tickets. When they heard that it was a sellout, they weren't prepared to go home. But Tim Zion's happiness soon fades. The owner of this petrol station denies he ever received soccer tickets to sell. So uh, I don't know, really. I don't think this is, this is one of the, the, the things that I'm expecting from our fellow brothers, but I'm trying to help them, you know. We are try trying to save the situation. What happened uh, last week, uh, the week after last, is what we are trying to, to sort out now, so that the people should have their ticket before they get to the game. They must get used to that one. You know, as the supporters, we are the, hard, the hardest hit, hit people because we, we plan, we plan, we spend our money by coming to the stadium. We plan and then we make arrangements with our 
families. At times you find that your wife says, no man, you can't go to this game, you don't have money. You say, please man, let me go to the game. I love this team. Spiritually I'm not here. You can see me man, I, I'm with the guys there. When the coach is talking now, I can hear the coach is talking. What the coach is saying is right inside my head. Also right inside his head, the terrible events at Ellis Park on the night of April the 11th. When I arrived there, I arrived there at um, 25 to 6. The stadium was almost nearly full. The game started, everything was with the atmosphere, the passion of the game was there. You can feel the atmosphere that the big teams in South Africa were playing. And then, you know, she scored a goal. I knew that we'll come back. And then within minutes, we equalized. When we were just about to score the second goal, the third goal, the fourth goal, and the fifth goal, there broke something. I can smell tear gas. When I smell tear gas, I go, oh God, something is not right. And what I can say, really, my heart even now is still sore. I still have those pains. And there's, a, there's something that uh, actually goes with what I've seen there. I think we needed to talk strongly with the administrators, our soccer bosses, uh, uh, to, 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 to come out with something that can uh, uh, make us, as supporters, safe. Here is better. You can see even now, uh, when you came, you have a parking, there are a lot of parking. There are people who are directing you where to park. Uh, the security guys who are at Ellis Park, I, I don't like those guys. They are not good for uh, our, our football. They are just there to come and bully you. So we don't want people who are coming to bully us because if you are there, you, have, you need to educate. The security guys must educate not to bully people. This really war now. This is war. Now we are going to the battle phase. We are going there. Let's go! If anything happens, Chapalani Jali has also arrived at FNB Stadium. He's concerned. He doesn't see any two-way radios. Okay. But, 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 but do you think it's right for, for, for security guards to be, for instance, taking what happened at Ellis Park? To, no, 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 to, we, to, we, to operate without no, no. two-way radios? Compare, you know, we, don't, we, we don't have to compare... Uh, 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 Ellis Park incident with, with, with this. Why? With what's this, what's the difference, Baba? Because you don't have, they did not have two-way radios. You don't have two-way radios. You know what's happened there? Uh, I, know, know. I, I know what, what, what happened what there, happened but, there? But, but, but so I'm you here can, now. You, you, no, no, you, you, you can't do touch into Ellis Park with Yeah, but we're talking no, about no. security guards, Baba. You know, Abba, Abba Gata is stadium, right? And we are saying that in such situations, right, whereby you might have a problem, people might want to come in forcefully, right? How do you how do you communicate with your seniors? How yeah, do you yeah, call for a, back, right a backup? We must have a radio, at least one, one. Yes, yeah. One operating, let's say all yeah, from yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. must have a radio. Yeah. yeah. But you don't have it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, then that means there is a guy with a radio down here. But yeah. He's no, you know, you know what? I was at the, at the Ellis Park when the whole thing happened, you mm -hmm. know. And that is why I'm concerned, you know, yeah. because I wouldn't like to see the very same thing happening again. No, you're you know. Right. Tickets are always on sale at the venue just before a match. A recipe for disaster, says commentator Mark Gleason. Except the norms nowadays are that selling of tickets uh, doesn't take place at the gate. It takes place a little further on down so that once um, the game is full, you can, in a sense, build up two or three perimeters to stop people approaching the stadium. Ellis Park Management was in charge of ticket sales on the night of the stampede. 57,000 tickets were sold. The seating capacity is 60,000. But many thousands more gained access to the ground. The corruption at the football comes from the people at the gates who, if you, if you are in a situation where tickets are, are, are completely sold out and you still want to get in the game, you slip the guy 10 or 20 rand and he lets you in through the gate. And he pockets that money and puts it in, you know, takes it home with it. He doesn't give it to the club. Some fans who had legitimate tickets for the Ellis Park match still have them, untouched by security. Look, my ticket is still like this. The previous game at Ellis Park. Yeah. Not turn off or anything. How did I get in the stadium? The security was useless. 
At tonight's game at FNB, touts are also selling tickets outside the ground, in full view of the police who drive past. Fans say tickets are often of poor quality and are easy to copy. This ticket is open to fraud. Look at the way it has been cut through. And it's even you know, black and white. And I can get the very same paper like this. Make it for a photo. Then made, made a photo study yeah. and, and get into the stadium. Nothing's likely to go wrong tonight or at any other match in the near future. But fans want that reassurance from the right people. And they want soccer administrators to acknowledge their mistakes now, not to hide behind a commission of inquiry. What is also very necessary is for the commission to speed up the process so that the results could speedily be brought back to the fans to relieve them of any fear in terms of saying what was supposed to have been done is now seen to be done in all the games that we are attending. So that when, when, when fans come to the game, they're not necessarily re risking their lives, but just coming in a relaxed mood to, to enjoy the game, not braving any situation. That's enough now, you know, there must be some accountability for this disaster. Somebody must be brought to book. Some action must be taken, some strong action by, by the PSL and by SAFA. And people are saying if it doesn't happen, then uh, they are not going to go to football anymore. And I think, you know, slowly we're seeing it in the sense we're seeing people voting with their feet. Uh, if, if South African soccer was uh, on an upturn, there would certainly be the crowds, but they're not. And that's just as well. Otherwise, there could be many more than these 43 South Africans who will never again watch another soccer match. Saturday, Bafana Bafana played Zimbabwe in a World Cup qualifier. The match went smoothly, although very poorly attended. It's interesting to note that in the past, games of this importance were packed to capacity. Tickets were sold some distance from the stadium, as many experts had recommended. But alcohol was sold outside the stadium, despite a heavy police presence. With so few fans about, parking was not an issue, as it was at Ellis Park. The real test for South African soccer administrators will, of course, be when Chiefs and Pirates meet again. As yet, there's been no word on whether there will be a rematch of that tragic premiership game. That brings us to the end of tonight's program. Next week, we travel to the Lesotho border where we look at stock theft, rural South Africa's biggest crime. Thank you for watching. Remember, you can phone, fax, or email us. All our numbers will be on screen at the end of the program. And remember, you can also watch our rebroadcast every Monday evening 20 past 11, SABC 3. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.